Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Roxana Filipowska and I am the Wordle Study Center Programs and Outreach Manager at the Yale University Art Gallery. Today I'm joined by Shauna Bryant, a breathwork facilitator. Hi Shauna, how are you? Hello, I'm so excited to be here, welcome. I'm very excited that you're here. Before I do an official introduction to breathwork and Shauna, I'd like to go over some just general housekeeping, how you might be able to interact with us. We are in a Zoom webinar format, so please feel free to use the chat feature to say hello, tell us where you are tuning in from. You're very welcome to share your experiences with us in the chat throughout this session and of course ask questions. I'm very grateful to the programs team of Maline, Jake, and Liz who will be available to answer questions in the chat as well. You are tuning into a session within the Mindfulness and Art series. This is a series that has been launched by Liliana Milkova and what's unique about this session that we are in right now is that it is taking place or rather, it is featuring an object that is physically located in the Wordle Study Center. And here I'm showing you a photograph of the Wordle Study Center. The Margaret and Angus Wordle Study Center is about the size of a football field and it holds over 42,000 objects. It is located on Yale West Campus. And so you may wish to imagine that we are gathering in this space throughout this session. The other aspect that is really, really unique about this program is that it features a breathwork facilitator and breathwork, which is the first time that we are doing so in this mindfulness and art series. And so here it is my utmost pleasure to introduce Shauna Bryant a breathwork facilitator based in the Washington DC area. One aspect of uh, Shauna's practice that I really, really appreciate is that mutual aid is a cornerstone of her practice, meaning that she is very, very attuned to how her practice integrates and, and relates to um, broader ecosystems. And she is actively building a network of breathwork facilitators who are dedicated to equity and anti-racism. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now so we can really focus on Shauna. And Shauna, I wonder if you can tell us what is breathwork? It's a great question. Um, breathwork has roots in Southeast Asia. It is an kind of an umbrella term. Um, it's often compared to pranayama breathing, which is the practice of controlled breathing in yoga. Um, another way to describe it is that breath work is the use of breath to induce a meditative state. Wonderful. And Shauna, could you tell us, um, for someone who is brand new to breath work, what can you expect? Yes, of course. If you are brand new to breathwork or if it's your 1000th time, um, there are a lot of things that may or may not happen in breathwork. Um, breathwork does introduce air in a purposeful way into the body. So a lot of times there's um, kind of a tingly feeling, um, almost a euphoric feeling. Um, at the very, very minimum, you will feel nice and relaxed. Um, so yeah, welcome if it's your first time or your 1000th. Breathwork tends to be different every time you do it. Um, I'm so glad that you all are here to enjoy this. This is so wonderful. And I wonder if you can tell us, do you recommend that people sit up straight for breath work or lie back down? We're going to do two breath work um, practices today. The first one is best enjoyed lying down. Um, it's one of my favorites. It's kind of a go-to if you are in a stressful place and you just need a couple moments to really pull yourself together, um, to just release stress instantly. It's a great practice. You don't need a lot of time for it. The second one, you are welcome to lie down. Um, and I think it's best enjoyed that way. Um, once lying down, you're able to fully relax. Um, and also, uh, I recommend that you have some, like a blanket nearby or um, 
even just like a pillow for underneath your knees, it's a, a good idea to make yourself as comfortable as possible in a blanket or a sweatshirt just because um, in the second style of breath work, even for the, the small amount of time we'll be doing it, um, people often feel a temperature change. They get really hot, they get really cold, so it's nice to have something nearby just in case you, um, you wanna change your, your climate. Wonderful, that's really helpful. So today we will be shifting from a very interior practice of the breath work to also looking at the screen to closely look and learn about one artwork from the Wordle Study Center. Um, so for everyone who is on this call and for anyone who is watching it later, um, just feel free to rearrange your seat as, uh, as you feel comfortable. Make sure that your brightness is up on your computer when you are looking at the artwork. And again, take what feels right, take what feels nourishing. So we'll begin with the first breathwork exercise and here I'm going to turn off my screen and hand the floor over to Shauna. So for this first exercise, I'm going to guide you through something called box breathing. Box breathing is, as I said, an easy tool to have just kind of in your pocket um, to help relieve stress, to um, help, you know, just give yourself a, a little mental break. You can do it for one minute, or in this case, we're going to do it for about six minutes. Um, I'll explain what we're going to do, then we can get started. Um, we're going to breathe in for a count, we'll hold our breath for a count, and then we'll release that breath and then hold the breath again. I'm going to use a four count. I invite you to use whatever number works for you. So if you're finding that the four is a little bit too long, you can just use your own number, right? Whatever you do, I recommend finding a um, finding like a an amount of time that feels that it can be consistent. The consistency, the rhythm of this breathing is what introduces a lot of calm. So I will invite you to just sit up as tall as you can. And press your feet into the floor if you're able. Let your hands rest gently in your lap. If you feel comfortable, you're more than welcome to relax your spine. You can um, not relax your spine. I mean, grow tall, but um, you can close your eyes. Hello. All right. So if you feel comfortable, go ahead and close your eyes. Um, if not, just find a downward gaze. So something that's not distracting. And we're going to just start with breathing in through the mouth or the nose in big breaths. So breathing in and all the air out. <sighs> Breathing in, all the air out. <sighs> Imagine that your body is getting taller. Imagine your ribs are getting wider. <sighs> Imagine your hips are getting heavier and your breath is inviting you into the space. Take a couple more rounds of big breaths in, inviting in calm. <sighs> releasing tension. And then we'll start with our box breathing. Breathing in for a four count. So big inhale, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, continue on your own. Again, you're welcome to do whatever pace works for you, whatever feels like it's requiring your attention, but it isn't causing you to be desperate for air. Allowing your inhale to feel full, the holds to feel peace, the exhale to feel release, and continue that rhythm. And as you do, you can start to focus in on your body Noticing your feet on the floor, noticing your hips in the chair, noticing the rise and fall of your chest, noticing any thoughts that are floating around in your mind. That's one of the best things about breath work. You can just let the thoughts float around. The breath will move them out of the way. 
We're doing this for just two more minutes, so continue your breathing in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, continue that breath, you're doing great, and let some of the pressure go, knowing whether this is perfect or imperfect, you're here, you're in this moment, you're giving yourself a bit of pause, a little bit of time just to reflect, to be truly present here in this moment. We have about 30 more seconds, continue that breath, and then we'll go back into our regular breathing, noticing what feels different. Take one breath in, Release all the air out. Take a big breath in. All the air out. Continue the rounds of breathing, just breathing in and out. And notice what feels different. Notice what feels lighter. Notice what maybe has shifted if your brain has calmed down a little bit. Three more rounds with this breath, breathing in, all the air out. Two more breath in, all the air out. Last one, breath in, all the air out. If your eyes are closed, you can open them slowly. If you're eyes were open already, you can start to move your eyeballs around the room. Allow yourself to shift your perception from your experience of the breathing exercise to the screen. So allow your eyes to adjust to the light Notice if you'd like to turn the brightness up on your screen and begin to focus on the object. Together we are looking at a photograph of an object. Notice if there are any initial responses. Notice if there is anything striking for you when you look at this object. I invite you to trace an outline with your eyes all around the object. How would you describe its shape? As you continue to breathe, notice the colors that you see. Notice if the colors repeat throughout the object. And perhaps choose one color that you see and begin to look around that point. Notice if you can see nuances of color, points where the color begins to fade and transform into another color. Together, we're looking at a high-resolution image that was taken in the gallery's photography studio. And so, imagine what size this object is. We don't have any indication of scale here. Just take a moment to imagine how large might this object be? Consider how you would describe its texture, 
What might it feel like to touch, to hold? This is a three-dimensional object, and if we were meeting in person, we would be able to walk around this object. So I'd like to share multiple views of this artwork so that we can imagine looking at it from the round. The image on the right shows the object from the front, and the image on the left is from the side, as though we were turning just a bit around the object. Focus your attention on the image on the left, and perhaps once again, use your eyes to trace an outline of this object. How does its shape appear now that you're seeing it from the side? How would you describe its shape? Notice if you are seeing any differences in color from the front to the side. Notice if you're seeing any differences in texture on the surface. Together we are looking at an artwork by the Japanese artist Kyoko Tonegawa. The work is titled Primeval Breath, and it was made around 1988. It is a stoneware made in the Nanban technique, and I'll explain what that, what that technique is in just a moment. But for now, I'd love to draw your attention to the scale of this work. Notice this first couple numbers. It's 22 inches and a half tall. So something that helps me imagine 22 and a half inches is imagining two rulers stacked back to back. If a ruler is 12 inches, then you could imagine two rulers making about 24. And so imagine that perhaps in front of you there are two rulers stacked, lined up, and this artwork is that tall. Notice if this is different than the scale that you expected this artwork to be. Notice if this changes your experience of looking at an image of this work. For those of you who are curious, the final number on this slide is the accession number, meaning that the gallery acquired this work in the year 2003. The artist Kyoko Tonegawa created this artwork on a rotating potter's wheel. And so I'll once again show multiple images of this artwork. Notice that the image in the center is a new one. It is the other side of this stoneware. Notice how learning just a little bit about the title and the dimension impacts your experience of this work. This work is made in the Nanban technique. And the word Nanban has many different meanings in Japanese. In terms of ceramics, it might indicate as though the work looks unfinished, as though it's still in the state of becoming. Of course, it's quite challenging to intentionally create a work that looks unfinished. Nanban also refers to a work that was fired at a cool temperature. 
and it's known to create a softness or a soft effect in the stoneware. Nanban technique is also known for its landscape of colors. Bright oranges are very difficult to achieve, as are hints of red. And so notice how the color orange and red may appear in this work. The artist Kyoko Tanegawa approached the Nanban technique in a very unique way. Her own technique involves shaping a vessel only from the inside, which means that she only applied pressure to the inside of this vessel, and that as it spun, on the rotating potter's wheel. The shape was altered by the centrifugal force. Perhaps recall that this work is 22 and a half inches tall. And perhaps imagine as though you're taking two rulers worth of your arm and placing into this vessel to shape it from the inside. Imagine what that would feel like. I'm now showing you an image of the artist standing next to one of her works titled Sandstorm. And this image was taken in the year 2015. Kyoko Tonegawa was born in Japan in the year 1937. And she came to San Diego State University to study ceramics from 1965 to 1970. And at that time, there were many Japanese master potters working on sabbatical and teaching at San Diego State University. Following her studies, she lived in Basel, Switzerland for 10 years, sharing a studio with the master potter, Arnold Zahner. And she returned to the US in 1981 and joined the Clay Dragon Cooperative Ceramics Studio in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And so the image that you're seeing, the photograph of her that you're seeing, is from a group show of the Clay Dragon Studio. Tonegawa then established her own studio in her home in Newton, Massachusetts, after the studio closed in 1985. Thinking back to the physicality of Tonegawa's process, it may not be surprising that anecdotally, people often remark at how strong she is, how strong she is to create this vessel only from the inside. While working in her home studio, Tonegawa became interested in achieving new textures, surprising textures, unknown textures. And she realized that in order to achieve new textures, she had to develop new techniques. And it was then that she developed this technique of shaping only from the inside. We're now zooming in on the texture of this stoneware. And I'm also sharing a quote from the artist herself. So about her process, Kyoko Tonegawa states, 
When the wheel is spinning very rapidly, I push out from the inside, never touching the outer surface. As I see the clay beginning to stretch and crack, I want to make it stretch more and more to make lava flow and continents drift apart. Notice how this affects your perception of this piece. And we'll now turn to another breathwork exercise to perhaps consider how the breath shapes us from the inside. For, for this next um, breathing exercise, I invite you to find a comfortable spot to lie down. You can lie in a bed, a yoga mat, couch, the floor, whatever is most comfortable for you. Um, if you are going to stay seated, I recommend finding a um, really sturdy chair. A lot of times in breath work, there is a little bit of wooziness or almost psychedelic feeling that kicks in and having a very um, comfortable chair is going to be the best way to, um, to enjoy this practice. A couple more things to think about um, as we start to breathe, um, and I'll explain the breathing pattern in a moment, but there may be um, a moment where you feel almost a tingliness in your hands or a tightness in the face. All of that is completely normal. If that makes you uncomfortable, you're always welcome to pull back um, and release the active breathing pattern and move into just an easy breath in and an easy breath out. Um, and the that feeling will subside very quickly. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that often there is a temperature change, so you might get hot, you might get cold. Again, that's completely normal. Um, you can have a blanket or even a sweatshirt, something to take on or off if necessary. Uh, the best thing about this practice, um, I feel, is that you can move a little bit. So if you want to shake a leg, if you need to scratch your arm, go for it. Um, this isn't a practice where you are um, you need to clear your mind, um, which I think makes it perfect for people with busy minds, with busy lives, because it does allow you to drop in and meditate even when your to-do list is still trying to linger somewhere in the corner. So as we move into this practice, I invite you to welcome in a sense of calm, a sense of acceptance, um, knowing that there is no perfect way to breathe, knowing that your breath is yours. Um, and whatever comes of this next 10 minutes, it's exactly as you were supposed to um, receive it. So the breathing pattern is quite simple. We're going to breathe into the mouth, into the belly, into the mouth, into the chest, and then exhale all the air out. Into the mouth, into the belly, into the mouth, into the chest. Exhale all of the air out. You can do this pattern as fast or as slow as you'd like. I'm going to play some breathing in the background um, just to let you know that we're all still here together. You can match that breathing pace or, or pick something that really works for you. Um, a rhythm, a pattern is going to be the best way to achieve that meditative state. So whatever you do choose, I, it, I encourage you to make it just a repetitive pattern. We're going to start with just a little bit of grounding then we'll move into our two-part breath, and then we'll have a couple moments of reflection before we rejoin each other in this space. So find your comfortable position. If you do have any questions, um, I ask that you save them till the end. Um, unless it's something that's really pressing, then um, there is someone available to answer most of the common questions. So know that that's also an option. Um, in your comfortable space, we're going back to that easy breath in. So let your eyes close if you feel comfortable and just take in big gulps of air. <sighs> Letting your body settle, feeling the connection to the ground, feeling the connection of your heels, of your hips, of your head to the ground. Keep your breath going in and out. If you'd like to set an intention for this meditation, perhaps you are in a state of becoming, perhaps you're focused on 
building yourself from the inside out. You can speak those out loud right now. Just say, you know, I'm working to be kinder to myself. I'm working to better myself from the inside out. Whatever it is, you can just say it out loud. And then we'll start our two-part breathing pattern together. Into the mouth, into the belly. Into the mouth, into the chest. Exhale all of the air out. Into the mouth, into the belly. Into the mouth, into the chest. Exhale all of the air out. You can just breathe like that, finding whatever pattern feels good to you, whatever feels like a rhythm, and rhythm that you can keep consistent. Know that these first couple moments, these first couple minutes are going to feel like they're taking a lot of effort, like they're taking a lot of work. Let that be okay. Be kind to your body. Be kind to your thoughts. Just keep that breathing pattern going and then your body will take over and your brain will relax. You can start to imagine that you're pulling in ease, you're pulling in joy, you're pulling in happiness, and you're relaxing and releasing any tension, any stress, anything that's building up. Just keep the breath going into the mouth, into the belly, into the mouth, into the chest. Big exhale. Maybe you're starting to feel a little bit of tingliness in your arms or in your legs. If you are okay with that feeling, you can breathe a little deeper and explore what's behind some of that. If you need a break, always take it. You can go back to our breathing in and out. You can let yourself relax. Really making these next moments something that you need. Not what you have to do, not what you should do. Making the choice to put you first. Making the choice to explore what your body needs. Let your breath get a little bigger into your belly. A little bigger into your back. You're doing great. You're about halfway through.
going to invite you, and this is completely optional, to add a little bit of sound to your breathing. Noticing how that sound echoes into your body, noticing where you feel your own voice. You take a big breath in, it's inhale, big noise, ha, maybe it's a sigh, breathing in, ha, any sort of yawn, throat clear, maybe you even want to yell, maybe it's a sigh, whatever comes out. Give it a couple rounds. Ha. Notice where you feel that sound in your body. And then keep your breath going. Remember whatever rhythm you choose is yours. And just keep breathing. Give yourself two more rounds with this active breathing pattern. And then go back to that breathing, just big breath in, all the air out. Big breath in, all the air out. Maybe you have a couple more audible exhales in you. Big breath in. All the air out. And allow yourself to stay completely still for one more minute. Noticing anything that shifted in your body. Maybe just welcoming in a sense of calm. If your eyes were closed, you can slowly open them, blink them a couple times, invite in some of the light, maybe a bright color in your room. Because breath work can make a little bit of wooziness, um, take your time if you are lying down, take your time coming to seated. If you're seated, give yourself a few moments before you stand up or move around a bunch. As you begin to shift back to your environment, I invite you to ever so gently and whenever you're ready, begin to return to the screen. We will be opening up the chat in just a moment to welcome reflection and discussion but as you start to ease back into 
communication and conversation, I'll show you a few images of how this artwork has been installed and also how it exists now in the Wordle Study Center. So here I'm showing you an installation image from 2007. Notice that Kyoko Tonegawa's work is on the left. For those of you who have been to the Yale University Art Gallery, you will recognize the ceiling as the distinctive feature of the Louis Kahn architecture. Notice the other vessels that are near primeval breath. And knowing that the work is 22 and a half inches tall, consider the scale of the other works. I'll now show you how the work was installed in 2010. Here we're zooming in a little bit. Notice that primeval breath is still on the left and now it appears with more of its stoneware kin. For those of you who have been attending other gallery programs and have attended the double take that the gallery guides have recently featured, you might recognize that the work on the right was featured by the gallery guides in a recent program. So notice perhaps the natural light. Notice again how this work appears near this other objects. And now we'll consider how this object appears in the Wordle Study Center. So here I'm showing you an image of us being inside of the Wordle Study Center. The gallery's open study storage space is organized according to medium, meaning that similar materials are next to one another. So we would begin by walking by a glass case with ceramics from Africa and Mesoamerica. We would keep walking to see vessels from the ancient Mediterranean. And we would continue to stumble upon primeval breath in a glass case with other Japanese stoneware pieces. Here on the right, you see an image that I have taken with my phone. And you can see how primeval breath appears on a glass shelf in the Wordle Study Center alongside other works from the Japanese art collection. And as juxtaposition, you see on the left, the high resolution image taken from our photography studio. Notice how these two different images impact your perception of this work. I'll pause on this slide that shows a close up of the artwork and that also shows the information about it. And I'd love to open up the chat now. We have been breathing together for about 45 minutes and we have also been exploring this work and our connection to this work for about 45 minutes. So as you have eased back to the screen, I invite you now to use the chat feature to share how was this pairing of breathwork and close looking for you? What was your experience? Did breathwork impact your perception of this work? Yes, I see some questions about whether this program will be available for repeat, repeat viewing participation. Yes, we are recording this program and it will be uploaded to the gallery's YouTube channel in about a week and a half.
for anyone who's new to breathwork, I'd love to invite you to share how was breathwork for you? Beth says, an extraordinary experience of art and breath, so human and experience. Oh, this is lovely. I'm now getting a lot of comments. All right, so going back to Beth's comment, so human and experience that is edifying from Connecticut. Ah, okay, there is a question from Charlie. And, um, and Shauna, this question is for you. Uh, so this question is, are there any differences between breathing through nostrils or through the mouth? Um, yes, to answer that. Um, this is a very hotly debated topic right now. Um, and I will just be very superficial about it. Um, breathing through the nose um, in breath work can give a more gentle experience, whereas breathing through the mouth does take in more air um, and it can give a bigger, deeper experience. Um, I find that both are really impactful. It just depends on um, you know, what you need that day. Um, and then, yeah, there's a bunch of science that I'm not qualified to speak to um, regarding mouth versus um, nostril breathing. But with both of the breathing patterns that we learned, or some of you may have done them before um, today, you can do nasal or mouth breathing with either of them. Um, both, both are effective. Great. And I'd love to share a few more comments here. Sonia says, thank you so much for this pause. The stretch texture of the material had my mind returning to my skin and the breath expanding it. Beautiful practice of looking and feeling. Sonia, I love that description of returning to the skin and the breath expanding it. Absolutely. Martha says, the breathing and object were well paired. Kathleen says, beautiful exercise. Are there other mindfulness and art series programs? Where can they be accessed? Yes, the mindfulness and art series is a monthly program. So once per month, you're going to see a, a gallery offering. Um, please subscribe to the gallery newsletter. That's probably the easiest way to stay in tune with that. Um, Lloyd says, judgment got dulled and words less attached to looking. Oh, if we were in person, I would absolutely welcome you to expand on that. Um, and uh, it sounds as though perhaps um, there is more presence accessed over the course of the exercise. Heather says, beautiful, I appreciated this inspiration, literally, <laughs> as a way of incorporating new ideas for my breath work into my way of breathing in a work of art. Thank you. I hope to share with a Potter friend. Mark mentions, I feel that the breath work allowed me to clear my mind and be more focused and attentive in my observation. Lovely. Oh, great. And Martha has a question. How is the color on the ceramic piece achieved? Great question, Martha. So um, the short answer is that um, I, both myself and um, the associate curator of Japanese art, uh, Sadako Oki, are very keen to interview the artist to really find out the details of this. Um, there's a bit of mystery around it but it seems like a lot of the coloring have um, to do with the Nanban technique, which is uh, firing at a cooler temperature so that those colors emerge. Um, it seems like with this work in um, 1988, Primeval Breath, um, uh, Kyoko Tonegawa was not necessarily applying any, any additional colors. So it's really this interplay of, of the temperature and the actual material. See, Sarah says, this has been amazing. It really helped clear my mind and helped me focus on the artwork in a way I would not have just looking at the photos on their own or in a busy museum. Thinking about how it would feel to throw a piece like this was a very interesting sensory experience as well. I had a hard time imagining not having my other hand out on the outside of the vessel. I agree, Sarah. And the breath work helped me clear my mind and definitely did some wild things with my body temperature. Yeah. 
Great. Um, a lot of people are observing that this is a very new and interesting experience for them and that they hope to revisit it. Um, uh, Valentine um, is saying thank you for the program. Breathwork allowed me to feel the heat from within my body and connect it to a lot with Kyoko's art process. That stretched texture that was also worked from within. Beautiful share. Thank you. <laughs> and Mark uh, has an offering for a future breathwork pairing. Um, Mark is suggesting that we try this with a Rothko painting. I think it would allow, um, uh, so Mark says, I think it would allow me to see more deeply the variations in the color. Yes, definitely. I think that's a great idea. Uh, Kathleen is sharing, I've done the box breathing before and find it very meditative. Thank you. The mouth breathing was new and hard work. And I kept thinking about Kyoto working her magic from inside out. Lovely. And Beth is asking, did Kyo uh, Kyo um, <laughs> Kyoko's work evolve into this style? Did she begin with work more traditional and then find this unique type? Yes. Definitely. Um, this was definitely a process. Um, uh, Kyoko Tanegawa um, trained in a lot of uh, traditional Japanese techniques. Um, also, uh, you know, while she was in Switzerland, she was very interested in um, local styles. Um, so based on my research, it seems like um, she, she was teaching during that decade in, in Switzerland, and she would love to take her students on field trips to local kilns and to uh, learn how um, pottery was made um, very locally. And so uh, I, you might recall that I shared a quote that um, Kyoko Tonegawa was saying that um, she was after new textures. And she realized that in order to create and achieve new textures, she actually had to develop new techniques. And so it was the search for new textures that led her to develop this very unique approach to the Namban technique, as in shaping from the inside. Yes, there were a couple more comments. Let's see. Ah, Kathleen asks, is Nanban similar to Raku? Great question. I don't know. I will look into that. And if you, um, if you email me, I will definitely um, share what I find with you. Linda says, thank you very much. The work is extraordinary. I enjoyed learning about this artist and this piece. I am inspired. <laughs> the work reminded me of breath and the stretch of our lungs as we breathe. Yes. Uh, the breath work opened um, me up to new idea on something I've been pondering. Oh, that's great. And maybe this is a wonderful moment to, um, Shauna, I'd love to uh, perhaps invite you to reflect upon how do you find breath work to feature in your own practice? I'm hearing a lot of people are saying that, you know, they're getting new realizations or they're finding it to be a breakthrough in creativity. And so I'm, I'm curious if you could comment on that. Breathwork is um, well known for its um, its boost of creativity, um, of of cre you know of inspiring um, and of really helping you kind of sort out your ideas. Um, I like to explain breathwork as perfect for people with busy minds, and it kind of makes sense if you think about creativity and things of that sort. Is that when we can calm down a little bit, or not calm down, when we can relax enough. How's that? Um, when we can relax enough um, to really just let our bodies um, feel and let our brains kind of, you know, take the second seat, that's when we can go really into our, our deep intuition and in terms of design and, and making really um, thoughtful decisions or being inspired to create. Um, that's where so much of that comes from, right? Like our, our more, in a, more of our inner knowing and less of our analytical brains. Thank you, Shauna. We have two more comments that I see in the chat. And so uh, Marcy says, thank you so very much. I loved how the guided looking helped me slow down to appreciate the piece more than I would have been able to on my own. And this is the first time I have done breath work. So it was a little strange for me, but very calming. Yes. And then let's see, Martha um, is observing the technique is interesting in that it is not a direct application of texture. There is an element of chance and loss of control. 
Absolutely, Martha. I completely agree. There is um, uh, what's so striking to me about this piece is that it obviously reflects such tremendous internal control from the artist. Uh, with I just imagine Tonegawa just you know being um, just uh, the way that her body through all of these repeated times that she has shaped these vessels, she knows exactly how to stand and you know how to hold and how to guide. But then of course it's a completely open-ended process. It is. Um, absolutely uh, open to chance, open to gravity, open to the unexpected. And so we have both of those forces. Absolutely. Um, we are nearing the end of our session. And so I'm curious if maybe we can take a bit of time to consider what now, what happens after a breathwork session. So Shauna, what do you recommend for people um, as they go about their day? As you go about your day, um, I recommend plenty of water um, and also just a softness in regard to your thoughts um, and definitely a pause um, on any anything that may have come up during breath work. And my example for this is just if you were like, oh, I'm trying to make a decision between A or B and in the middle of the breath work session, you're like, definitely A, give it about 24 hours. Um, I think a lot of times the breath can really open us up. Um, and I think it, your brain and your body just need a little bit of extra time to kind of rejoin each other um, before you make any, any, any big decisions. So that is it. Um, I really hope that in learning these two breathing techniques, you will continue to do them. Um, the box breathing is something that can easily be done just for a minute or two to help invite in some calm. Um, the other the two-part breath usually about eight minutes or more um, is an amazing way to practice this and if you're on your own you can just play like two of your favorite songs lay down and breathe and then give yourself a moment before you get up uh, it's, it's really um, your breath is yours and and you can access and harness it um, whenever you need it so I hope you take that with you that's great Shauna thank you I would love to take um, this moment to really thank you for, for joining me for this program. It has been such a treat for me. Um, thank you. And I'd also like to uh, thank Sadako Oki, who I mentioned before, and Sadako is the Japan Foundation Association, uh, Associate Curator of Japanese Art at the Yale University Gallery. Thank you so much for your support in this program. And I'd love to thank everyone who has tuned in and everyone who is tuning in later for the recording. Um, we had over 80 people here, which means that this is a group of over 80 people looking, um, breathing, and also imagining, which is so, so wonderful. Um, it strikes me that, you know, the experience of our breath is unique and yet we also breathe together. So it is both a unique and shared experience. And our breath also connects us to the environment, which we share and which we co-create. So thank you all so very much for joining us. Uh, we'll be on for just uh, two more minutes. So if you'd like to you know, say anything in the comments, you are very, very welcome to. Um, but please do take good care and have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Bye, everyone.